First, let's start by checking whether your system has node installed. You can do that by running node-v and if it returns something like this, that means you have node.js. If you don't, then you can head to node.js official site and download and install it depending on whether you're running Windows or Mac. After that, you can use nodes package manager npm to install angular cli using gflag to install it globally so that you can run it from any folder and then we can use ngcli to generate our first angular application i'll name it angular crash course and then the first thing it's going to ask is whether i want default routing and i'll say yes and then the next thing is the CSS engine and I'll pick SAS and then it generates the app. So I'll navigate inside of the folder with the app and run ng serve to start serving it locally. After that completes, I can go to localhost at 4200 port and this is our Angular application. Next, let's replace this default content with something more custom. For that, I'll go back to terminal, split into the second pane, and navigate into the folder with the app one more time, and then open it in Visual Studio Code. Then I'll find index.html file and open it here. And then in the browser, I'm going to go to UIKit CSS Framework page and into the installation section and copy these CDN URLs for importing the CSS framework into my app. So I'll paste it here in index.html. And then in UIKit, I'll find the component for adding a nav bar and just copy the snippet that they provide here as an example. And then go to the app component HTML, which is the main component of the app right now and contains all the default data and paste that nav component from UIKit right here. I'll set the default nav items home and shopping cart just for now. And now after app refreshes, we can see them right here. Next, let's see how we can add some custom CSS to this component. For that, I'm going to open one of the menu items in the inspector and see that it's an A tag that sits inside of LI that sits inside of UL. So with that information, I'm going to open the SCSS file that belongs to this main component and then add some SAS markup to add custom color to these elements. And now they're turning teal. Next, let's see how to use routing. So I'll go into app routing module and modify this default routes array to first have a path for an empty string, which will be the default application path. And for that path, I'll specify which component it should load. And I'll say that it will, it will be home component, which at the moment doesn't exist. So let me go to the terminal and generate it using ngcli. So the command will be ng generate component and name of the component, which will be home. Hit enter and that does it. And now I can auto import it in VS Code using auto import feature, just like this. And when I reload the app at the default route, we now see the template that belongs to the newly generated home component. And just to prove that, I'm going to go into the template of it and see that it's the exact same string as we see here. All right, back to routing. And now let's declare the second path for shopping cart, just like this. And then the component for that will be shopping cart component, which also doesn't exist yet. So again, back to the terminal and use the same command to generate this new component like that. All right, now we can import it again. 
And now if I specify the slash shopping cart path in the browser, we see that it now loads the template from shopping cart component. Now let's see how to point these menu items to these new routes in a proper way. For that, go back to app component template. And actually, let me remove these classes since we are not using them. And now to point these menu items to the new routes, we are going to use router link attribute from Angular core router and just point them to these new paths. And when I reload the page and click on these menu items, notice how Angular navigates to proper components without reloading the page. So that works as expected. Now I'm just going to put this router outlet that outputs the components according to routes into UK container class from UIKit so that it adds a little bit of padding around it. Now it looks much better. All right, let me show you some more cool things you can do in component templates. So let's navigate to shopping cart component controller and here declare a property that will contain an array of items, which will be milk, eggs, and cheese. And then go into the template of this component and let's see how we can list those items here. So first it'll be UL tag and inside of there will be list items where for the list item, I'm going to add this Angular structural ng4 directive that loops over the items and outputs each one of them using interpolation in curly brackets, just like this. And when I reload the page, here are the items. Now let me just add UIKit UK list class here for a little bit of styling. And that's it. Another super useful Angular structural directive is ngif, where I can check the length of items array and see if it's more than one, and then have this element to show in a template and show the count of items. So when I refresh the page, I see that it is displayed because there are more than one item. And if I delete a couple of items and leave just one and refresh the page, I see that element disappears. So that's ngif. Next, I'll show you some cool property binding that you can do. For that, I'm going to add this button element next to each item, which will be just an X for deleting stuff. And then I'm going to bind to its native title property using square brackets, where I will assign a string that will be a concatenation of word delete, and then whatever the name of the item. And now when I hover over this button, I can see this dynamically generated title property. All right, so along with native property binding, you can do native event binding. So here I'm going to bind to the native click event. And when that happens, I'm going to call deleted method and pass the item from the array. Now this method doesn't exist yet. So let me add it in the component controller, just like this. And for now, I'm just going to output the name of the item in the console, just to make sure it is wired up correctly. All right, click on the delete button and I can see the name of the deleted item. Now I'm going to finish writing this method by renaming the argument name to deleted item to avoid some naming collision. And then I'm going to update the items property by filtering out this deleted item from it, just like this. And now when I click on the item, it gets deleted from the array and therefore from the template. Next, let me show you how to pass data between components using custom input property binding. So let me duplicate this block here and comment out the original one. And inside of the new one, instead of directly outputting the string, I'm going to delegate 
this responsibility to a custom component that I'm going to create. And now for it to be able to output this items length, it needs to have that items array. And how you can pass that data to it is by using these square brackets and referring name of the property, which I will give it to be items. And then you pass the items array like this. Now let me generate this new component using Angular CLI. and then go open its controller. And then import the input decorator from Angular Core. And then use it to create an input property that will have the same name as I mentioned it in the template. And then when I go back to the shopping cart template and resave it, the red squiggly disappears, meaning that everything is wired up properly. Now let me copy this string that used to be in this original div and paste it in item counter template because that's the whole responsibility of this new component. And then reload the page and we still see the items count displayed, but now it is displayed using this new component and we pass the data about the items to it so it knows how to display the number. And that's how you pass data between components. Now let me just delete this original div and it looks good. Now let's talk about fetching data from the API using HTTP. Let's go to the shopping cart component and see this list here. Usually this comes from some kind of an API call. So let's cut this list out from here and then go into the assets folder and create shopping cart.json file that we will use to simulate calling an API call and getting a JSON array of items. All right, so now we have this empty default items array here. How can we possibly populate it with that data that's supposed to be coming from the API? Now in Angular, all the API calls or HTTP calls are supposed to be dedicated for services. So let's generate our default data service, just like this, and then open it here and create the first method called getItems. And what we would need to do here is to use Angular's HTTP client to make that API call to fetch the list of items. But before we can use that HTTP client, we need to import HTTP module in our app from Angular common HTTP and then add it to the imports array like this. Now we can use it in our service. So we can inject it into the constructor like this. Notice the auto import on the top. And then I can use it here and call its get method to fetch that shopping cart.json file that will simulate a call to the API. All right, now let's go back to the shopping cart component and inject the data service and then use it here and it's get items method. And because it returns an observable, we need to subscribe to it, which is just like calling that then on promise. And inside of the subscribe method, I'm going to pass the function that will simply output the result of calling that method into console. So now when I reload the app, I see that it successfully fetches the list of items right here. So I'm going to replace this console log statement with assigning this result to the items array. And now when I reload the app, I see the items displayed again, but this time they are fetched from the API. Now these are the bare bones fundamentals for building your application using Angular. The last bit I'm going to show you is how to deploy that on a server. 
So for that, you'll need to use ng build command with dash dash prod argument, which will generate this dist folder, which you can open with a finder if you're on Mac or file explorer if you're on Windows. And then go to your Netlify dashboard if you have one. If you don't, create one. It's super quick and easy. And then simply drag and drop your site like this. And then after a couple of seconds of magic, it is running on a cloud just like this. If you like this video and would like to learn more practical Angular skills to build your next app, check out my online course that I linked in the description. And thank you for watching.